So let's say that, again, this is more or less what the hand animation we want. So how do we get this in the game? We don't need this any, you know, we don't need to change this anymore. Well, the very first thing, and I, I guess I forgot to tell you about this, down here in the timeline uh, attribute window, there's a small little orange dot that you real that you need to click, and that is the automatic keyframe button, so that you don't have to press I for keyframes each time. It just automatically puts in the keyframes for what you've done, and you want to click this little ghost that is in the dope sheet uh, attribute window, and what that does is that allows you to edit everything in here, and it's just a that's just a blender thing. Otherwise, sometimes you'll put down keyframes you shouldn't be editing you want to edit but th the program thinks that you don't or you shouldn't be editing and in in this case you want to so let's say that you want to get this in game and let's move this let me go here and uh fix an error real quick There we go. So, again, and this is something you'll ultimately get over time. So, in this first frame here, this is our hand animation. So, the very first thing you want to do before you even have an animation here, which I'll show you this animation, I'm going to run through the animation with you, is you want to select all of the bones in here by pressing A, then press Control C to copy that current pose. Then you want to go to the end of your animation. In this case, the end of my animation is at 113 frames. And then click Paste. And what that should do, again, keyword here being should, you may have to do it twice, is that will copy and paste that pose from the beginning of your animation to wherever the end is just for, just a it, uh, there's continuity so you're not remaking it now what this will do is that if you didn't have any keyframes in between that will make it so that if you make a new keyframe it will try to warp back to the original but just just so that you know for for posterity you have two choices you can either copy the pose in the actual 3d space via c pressing a then copy then moving to the part in the timeline then pressing paste or you can alt right click all of these keyframes in the dope sheet press shift D to duplicate and then move that duplicated set of keyframes wherever you want it to be. Now, I keep getting distracted from it, but let's let's go and uh, move this uh, animation, this hand animation into the file that we need. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to click add this frame and this is just the first frame and that's it. You go to export and then export RTM animation and over here you're gonna have something called static pose and you know clip frames from to one zero to one you always want to have that on that's just a that's just the armor thing but over here you want to click static pose that automatically makes it so that the first frame is a T pose and the second frame is a frame that you had and that's the one that you need to have for armor and then if you want to export that then you click export as RTM but that's not why you're probably watching this video probably watching this video to see how to make you know a weapon animation so let's go in you know, I'm gonna save real quick I'm gonna save this as a copy of armor rig example I don't know example example and then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete all the keyframes that we have in here and I'm gonna remake the animation completely okay so how do you make a reload animation well the very first thing I suggest is checking out a youtuber by the name of hyper and he makes really good animations I believe he actually went on to work for Titanfall and doing the weapon animations in that game he has a tutorial video on blender and some of the ideas of that you want to have in your head when you're animating 
and I'm just going to repeat some of them here, but I highly recommend you go watch him because he gets it a lot more than I do. The very first thing you want to do is you want to animate consistently with a consistent amount of frames in between your actions so that you have so that you know how quickly or how slowly something is going to move. So, for example, I animate for Arma 3 on 3s. That means that every single action that is going to occur in the animation is either going to happen on... Uh, the third frame, the sixth frame, the ninth frame, and everything is going to be on three, 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 three. So th th that makes it so if you have a, let's say, a animation that's 120 frames and, and the animation is 30 frames per second, then you have a four second animation. And it creates a continuity between the faster actions and the slower actions, and it gives you a better idea of, let's say that you were animating an M60. Well, an M60 is much hev heavier than an AK-47, or in this case, AK-74, if you're a military spur. Well, that means if you wanted to lift the weapon up, you might want to use... 12 frames or 18 frames instead of using 6 frames or 3 frames and just keeping and so that's why animating on 3s is the second thing and this is just an this is just a uh, principle uh, I guess I guess really a principle that I found while animating for Arma is that you want to block in the animations first all the more important keyframes first and then make the ones in between that that combined with animating on threes is what why I'm able to create animations. So if we just you know move around here, so what so where do we go from here? Well, if you're gonna reload an AK, what do you got? What what are the basic actions? First, he has to let go of the gun, grab the magazine, pull the magazine out, and since this is Arma, and you have a and the animation plays on the first person and third person models, and it's the same animation. He's gonna have to put the magazine away in the ether somehow, grab another magazine out of the ether, and then put it into the weapon, and then you know optionally manage the bolt. Now, even though Arma doesn't have different animations for managing a bolt or for, uh, let's say, if your weapon is partially loaded. It's good to just put the weapon bolt animation in there, you know, like pulling pulling the bolt or pressing the bolt release because, you know, it looks good and people who play this game care about that kind of stuff. So, stage one is getting the character to grabbing the magazine. He's going to go from grabbing, holding the weapon still, to grabbing the magazine. So, let's say that it's going to take him 12 frames to grab the magazine. So, you can go to frame... 12 here and this might be too fast I might want to put it at 24 but and and, and just as a disclaimer I'm not going to do all the blocking in that I'd usually I, I, I excuse me not blocking in but all the detail with the hands that I'd usually do you know another disclaimer and another pro tip is the more animated the fingers are the more realistic it seems even though to, you know you, there'll be a point where it's like well technically he doesn't have to move his fingers that much the more it, it just makes it seem much more lively and much more realistic and much more animated. Gee whiz, and animation that looks animated. So on the AK, you got that bolt, the, the magazine release, and you got to press that. Or so, so people who know more about guns have told me. So here's this frame of. You know, he has his fing he's gonna have his fingers around the gun or excuse me, around the magazine, but not pull you know, not clasping the magazine yet, because he doesn't need to clasp it first, he needs to release the magazine first. 